Okay. I'm just doing this out of obligation. It's really one episode, but... Okay, well, let's just get this over with. Hey guys, this is my top five worst episodes of season four. Yes, this title is more so for clickbait, if anything, but I still wanted to do it because I'm keeping with the tradition. There really isn't any. And funny enough, with the last few seasons, it's gotten harder and harder to find bad episodes. And for this season, there was only one episode that came in below par. So that's pretty decent. So for any of you who watch the series, you know how it ends. But either way, I'm going to do top five. This is just my opinion. Don't hold it to me, but I guess you can. <laughs> these are just my opinions, but again, these episodes have been out for over 10 years now, so it's all subject to matter and blah, blah, blah. There aren't any honorable mentions, so we're starting off with number five, and this one's probably going to get a few of you a little bit perturbed. It's Monster at the End of the Book. Now, this one, I don't like the first half of it. I like the idea of Chuck being a prophet and how they would use this later on the show, but the entire concept of Sam going to lay with Lilith, and you just know that's obviously not going to happen, but everything in the episode is trying to make you believe that what Chuck sees is going to happen. I think I made a comment in the review for this episode that this needed to happen, things like this needed to happen to have the Chuck character kind of be grounded, but at the same time still kind of have relevance to the entire plot thread for both season four and season five, but it's just not as well executed as I think it should have been, but it also put the writers into a literal block. They couldn't really get around it, so they had to drive through it not in the best of means obviously now number four is another one that i'm not really happy about saying but again score wise is metamorphosis and i feel really shitty about this one because this was the last episode that kim matters directed perhaps his health was starting to get really in the way of himself and also they're still kind of coming up with the idea of the story for the brothers and while the brothers really have a very annoying and very bitter back and forth like child dialogue throughout this whole episode this is one of the best episodes for a one-off monster because you feel for the guy you actually have sympathy for the monster and you don't really have that much in supernatural and eventually it would get worse so you wouldn't really have it at all later on so i do like that manners was able to give us a character that while the episode itself might not be as good as it could have been i still remember this character so really this is me defending this episode, but yeah, the whole brother bit was just so childish, so boring, so repetitive that it takes this episode in half. It cuts it in half because it just, it, it bogs it down when there's such a great developing character story happening in this episode. So that's why it's number four. Number three is Chris Angel's a douchebag. Now this one actually has a very funny name, but I feel that they went with the name and the kind of the concept just because they didn't have much else. This episode is in the block of the filler episodes that followed the mid-season finale for season four. I do like the aspect of the older magician kind of have, being in a has-been, kind of wishing for the glory days and unwittingly using dark magic used by one of the other magicians if you really want to bring it down to brass tacks it's like the faith episode in terms of someone getting something at the cost of someone else's life really that could be bogged down to a lot of different supernatural stories but that one in particular this one just wasn't as funny as you thought it was going to be the concept of it doesn't really blow it out as well as you think it would and it ends really sad. I think that's probably the best part about this episode is that it ends on such a somber note that that's the part that I remember the most is that in the end no one wins even though they technically stop an evil. But otherwise it's just it's a me episode to me. It's a kind of middle of the road. I'm really just kind of pulling excuses out of my ass here. Number one I have a lot of gripes with but ugh, let's get on to number two. Number two is sex and violence. I like the idea of sirens. And I like how they were proposed into this episode. But at the same time, the overacting is not the greatest from the two of them, especially when they're both infected. Like, I understand that they're supposed to be overzealous of each other. They're supposed to be infatuated with the siren guy, and they're supposed to be over the top for each other. But it just comes off as very corny comes off very cheesy and it's funny enough too that i complain about it considering this is kind of the building platform for the divine that would happen between the brothers there already was 
materials, technically speaking, just with what Sam was doing with Ruby, but this episode was the one that started to really put it together. Again, kind of going back to season one, a very similar kind of concept to that of Asylum in terms of infatuations or uh, manipulation of the main characters, but it just doesn't come off as great as you think it would, and despite the subject matter of this episode, it's very forgettable, so that's kind of why it's here. And now number one, this is actually an episode that's bad, Family Remains. I know there are some people who like this episode, I know there's some who like the idea of regular humans being monsters, and I just, I just can't take it seriously. If this was an actual person in this situation, she'd be dead. This person would be frail bones, it would be barely anything. You can eat rats, cool, how do you take down a fucking human being? I don't like the concept of it, I don't like how it's executed, I hate the twist. I hate the stupid twist with the twin brother thing, even though it's gross, I think it more so goes for that gross factor. The only good parts about this episode I would say is that Goosebumps has that kind of connection with the weird girl, and then the hand licking bit that happens where the girl thinks it's the dog but it's actually not. That's an urban legend sort of idea and I like that, I thought that was cool. But otherwise, I don't like how this episode goes through. The family is so goddamn cliche. The whole night vision bit doesn't make any sort of sense in terms of how they're portraying it. I don't understand why it's like they wanted to have a found footage bit in it, even though it's not a found footage episode. And the fact that it's the mid-season return just bogs this episode down so badly. It just sucks. Uh, I don't like it. It's my least favorite episode of this season. If there was one episode I could take out of this season, it would be this one. I would have gone with Chris Angel's a douchebag being the mid-season return over this episode, because I just it just sucks. And there you have it. Those are the five worst episodes, in my opinion, of this season. Honestly, I was just pulling excuses out of my ass for all of them except the first ones. But now I'm gonna do a video talking about the best ones. And least to say there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven honorable mentions alone. There's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a long video. Anyways guys, thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week with the final Season 4 video before we fully move on to Season 5. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.